Hello guys and welcome to the Unreal Engine 5 Complete Beginner Tutorial. So this tutorial is for the complete beginner, whether or not you have little or no experience with Unreal Engine 5. This tutorial is to get you familiar with using Unreal Engine 5, as well as teaching you the very basic things that you need to know to get started. Unreal Engine 5 is a massive game engine. There's a lot of different systems within the engine, and it can be very overwhelming to start learning. And so this is why I've made this tutorial so that you can really just get comfortable with using the engine to work on whatever project or whatever it is that you're using the engine for. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing that you'll need for this tutorial is to download Unreal Engine 5. To do that, you're going to need to actually download the Epic Games Launcher. So go ahead and head over to this website right here to Epic Games official website and go ahead and click this download link. I will leave it in the description below, but you will need to download the Epic Games Launcher and create an Epic Games account if you haven't already. If you have already downloaded the Epic Games Launcher, you can go ahead and skip to the timestamp on the screen, but otherwise, you can continue and follow along on the tutorial. All right, so once you go ahead and download the Epic Games Launcher and create an account, you obviously want to go ahead and log in. And the first thing that you will see if it's your first time opening up the Epic Games Launcher is you're going to see this store tab. Now this is basically like Steam or really any other game service platform if you're familiar with Steam or not. To head over to the Unreal Engine tab is to just click Unreal Engine tab here on the left of the screen. You can see there are a couple different sub tabs in here. The main one that we're going to focus on is the library. So the library is essentially where you can install the current versions of Unreal Engine. In this case, uh, you might not have any engine versions installed and you also might not have any projects created. So to add an engine version, in our case to add Unreal Engine 5, we want to hit this little yellow plus button. So if you click the yellow plus button, it will give you an option to select which engine version you want to download. Now I'm going to select Unreal Engine 5.0 uh, Preview 1 and once you've gone ahead and done that it's going to ask you where do you want to install the engine at a location on your hard drive or you can just leave it as the default and then just hit OK. Now while the engine is downloading and installing this might take up to 10 to 15 minutes depending on your internet speed but once that is finished downloading all you have to do to launch Unreal Engine 5 is to click this launch button right below. So this is basically the Unreal Engine project browser. This is where you can create new projects or open existing projects. Now you might not have any existing projects in your browser if this is your first time, but basically if you have any existing projects, you're going to see them listed here. And for us, we want to create blank new project. So up over here on the left are our current options. So we have our recent projects, then we have our games. So there are a couple different templates here for games. You can see we have a first person template, third person template, and so on. Then we have the film, video, and live events. Uh, so you can see we have another couple different templates there. Architecture, and automotive product design and manufacturing. So depending on what you're using the engine for, uh, there's obviously a wide variety of things that you can use it. But in this case, I'm going to select games. Of course, you can choose whichever template you want and this tutorial will basically be the same. So in the games tab, I'm just going to select the third person. Then under the options here for our project defaults, we have a couple different options to configure. So you can see here we can choose between Blueprint and C++. Uh, this is basically the visual scripting system of Unreal Engine and we'll go more in depth on explaining that later. But we can leave all of our project settings at the defaults here. You can see our target platform is desktop, quality preset maximum. Down here at the project name, you can go ahead and choose a project name. We can just name this our first project. And then in the location here, you can browse to pick a location on your computer where you want to save your current project. So let's go ahead and just click create. Now, if this is your first time launching the engine, and if this is your first time in Unreal Engine 5, 
you might see a couple of different pop-ups here in the bottom right of your screen. Uh, things saying comp compiling shaders, or in my case you can see new plugins are available. Uh, you can just click dismiss those messages or click the X button if there is. If it does say compiling shaders, you might just need to give it five to 10 minutes for that to complete. But once all those messages are away, uh, we have basically here Unreal Engine 5. First of all, let's actually just get familiar with the UI first. That's our first task here in learning how to use Unreal Engine. We just want to become familiar with really all the basics. So in the middle of the screen here, you can see we have this viewport. If you right click and at the same time hold down WASD, you can move and navigate around the viewport. So again, you can right click, hold on right click, and then use WASD to move around. So those are the basic viewport controls. Other than that, you can scroll in and out to zoom in and out. And you can also select various objects in the level using the left click. Okay, so those are some of the basic viewport controls. Now you can see as we actually select objects in our viewport, we have this little moving gizmo as well as a yellow outline on whichever object that we actually select. So let's actually go ahead and experiment with manipulating objects inside the viewport. So if you select an object, say this cube over here, you're gonna see this little movement gizmo. Now this movement gizmo has three different colors. So you see it has a blue arrow, a red arrow, and a green arrow. And if you look down at the bottom of your screen, you're going to see a Z, an X, and a Y. And basically the Z axis is the blue arrow there, the red is the X axis, and the Y is the green axis. So if you take this arrow and select any of the arrow colors, in this case green, which is Y, you can see if we hold down the left mouse button, you can drag this cube and move it around on the Y axis back and forth. Now we can do the same for the red arrow, which is the X axis, and we can move it back and forth. And then if we, if we click and select the blue arrow, we can move the cube up and down on the Z axis. Now you can also select two different arrows at the same time if you hover in between the two arrows. And you can see we can move the cube both on the X and Y. We can do the same for the Z and X, and also the Z and Y. Now if you want to, you can move the entire cube by just selecting this middle mouse button. And those are the basic move controls within Unreal Engine. Now there are two more ways you can manipulate objects within Unreal Engine, and that is using the Rotate tool. So if you select here at the top right, on this little rotate objects. And you can actually use the hotkey, which is E on your keyboard, or W to get back to the movement tools. And if you hover over these buttons here on the top right, you can see if we press W, we can select and translate objects. If we press E, we can select and rotate objects. So when we press E, we have this rotation gizmo. And this allows us to rotate our cube on whichever axis that we want. So you see we have the X, Y, and Z. Any axes you want and rotate it like so. Now if you manipulated an object and you didn't want it to, you can always press Control Z to undo those previous actions if you want to go back to what it was originally. Okay, now the last tool is the scale tool. So if you select here on the last button, it says select and scale objects, which is R. So again, W to get your move gizmo, E to get your rotation gizmo, and R to get your scaling gizmo. Now the scaling gizmo works basically the same as the other three gizmos in that you can grab either axis and scale an object according to the axes. So in this case, I'm grabbing the Y, I can scale it, this cube in the Y, or in the X, or in the Z, then Control Z to undo, or I can scale it in two axes at the same time, the Y and X, like so. And again, we have W to move, E to rotate, and R to scale. 
Okay, so those are the basic object manipulation tools within the viewport of Unreal Engine. Now, let's actually go over some of these other buttons here on our viewport. And I will explain all of the rest of the windows that you see here on the screen, but we're just going to start here just with the viewport. So again, we had our little gizmos that you can toggle. Now, the next gizmo here is basically this little circle here, and this allows us to change between local and world gizmo control. So what that means is if I rotate this object like so, you can see our gizmo stays the same, orientated to this grid or to the world's grid system. Now, if I change this to local, you can see our gizmo adjusts to the local space of the cube or the local orientation of the cube. And now I can move the cube according to that local space. So you can change it back at any time and it will adjust the gizmo to either the world space or the local space of the cube. So if you've used any other 3D application like Blender, Maya, you might be already familiar with this concept. Now I'm just going to set this back to global for the most part you'll be using the global the global space but sometimes when you're manipulating objects in the viewport you might need to switch it to the local space okay next up is surface snapping basically when you drag in an object into your level uh, if this setting is enabled the object will automatically snap to the ground the next three buttons here I want to take a minute to explain, but you can see if we hover over these buttons, you can see this allows us to toggle the grid snapping of our object. So you can see right now we can move our cube around, and if we actually get a little bit closer here, you can see our cube actually snaps to this grid, this invisible grid that the cube is on. And that is because we have grid snapping enabled. So if you uncheck the grid snapping and you can see it went gray from blue to gray that means that we can manipulate and move our cube without any grid snapping so this allows us to have more fine control over where exactly we want this cube or where exactly we want an object in our level and you can enable that and you can also click on this 10 you can change the snap snap size so right now it's at 10 we can change this to 500 and you can see when we move the cube around, it's snapping at every 500 units on the grid. Again, you can change this back down to 10 or turn it off if you don't like it. The next one is the rotation snapping. So if we go to our rotation gizmo, again, if you press E on your keyboard, I'll pull it up. You can see we're rotating right now by 10 degrees. We can turn this off so we get finer control over our rotation. Or you can change this to say rotate 90 degrees that way you get a clean rotation and then lastly if we press R to get our scale gizmo we can disable and enable our scaling so we can have it scale smooth or if we want it to snap to a particular snap setting we can adjust the grid snapping like so okay so those are the three different grid snapping settings the second to last button here is the camera speed so this allows us to adjust how fast our camera will move around in the viewport. So if we bring this down to one, you can see we can move really slow here. I usually find this really useful if you're trying to look really up close to a certain particular object. Uh, you can also, if you scroll your middle mouse button, it'll give you actually faster control of your camera. And if you scroll your middle mouse button, down it'll give you slower movement of your camera and of course you can always take this slider and scale it up to eight if you really want to zoom around your map let's say you have a really big level or a scene you might want to adjust your camera speed accordingly now one thing that might happen to you often is you might actually be super far away from your scene and to get back into the action you can just select any object and press F on your keyboard. And that will actually bring you back into your scene and let you focus on a particular object that you are selecting. So again, that is F on the keyboard. Now this last button allows us to have sort of a quad view 
of our scene. So if you scroll out here, what you're going to see here is basically the different view orientations of your scene. So in this case, we have the back of our level here. We have the right view, and then we have the top of view. And then in the bottom left here, we have just our normal perspective view. So you can change any of these viewports uh, to whichever perspective you want by just selecting on the right here. You can change this to perspective, top, bottom, and whatnot. To get back to your normal view, if you just click this box icon, it will maximize it back to our viewport. So this is very useful for if you're designing out a level or a scene and you really need precision in lining some objects up. So again, back into our viewport here. Those are the basic controls here on the right. Uh, we do have a couple of different controls here on the left that will go over really quickly. So if you click on the viewport options, you can see we have quite a long menu here. And you guys can really mess around with some of these settings, but some of the main ones I'm going to point out are show FPS. So if you want to see your frame rate, you can toggle it by showing your frame rate or hiding it by just clicking on it here. Then you can change your field of view. I really haven't played around with some of these other settings, but again, you, you guys can dig into some of these. Okay, over here is our perspective. So again, these are the different orientations that you can change your viewport to. So we can change it to top, get ourselves a top-down view of our scene. We're back to perspective. Next up, we have the different V modes. So we can have lit, which is what you see here. We have this nice lit scene. We have shadows. You can change this to unlit, so you'll get an unshaded viewport. Uh, this is really useful if you're running Unreal Engine 5 on a lower spec machine and you want to get a better frame rate boost. Also, if you're just blocking out your level and you don't really want to look at the lighting, then we have wireframe. So this allows us to see the various polygons on our objects in our scene. And it also kind of gives us this x-ray view where we can see through every single object in our level. Now again, there's a lot more different options here that you guys can dig into, but I'm just gonna go back to the default mode, which is lit. Then we have show, show and hide various things, such as some of the different objects, or uh, let's say like the fog or the grid. And then some of these things are more advanced settings. So maybe in a separate tutorial, we'll go over some of these things. But those are your basic viewport settings. Let's go over some of the other UI elements here in Unreal Engine 5. So first of all, let's go over our, our outliner window. So as you might have seen, as we select objects in our level, you're going to see our outliner highlight the various objects that we're selecting. So in this case, SM underscore cube 8, SM underscore cube 7, SM underscore cube, and whatnot. This outliner just shows all of the different objects in our level. So if you select any of the objects in your outliner here, you're gonna see the objects become selected in your viewport. And now as you actually select different objects, you're gonna see in this details panel, we're going to get different settings per different object. So let's go ahead and just select this cube for example. So in the details, we see the name of the object that we have selected. The main things that I want to focus about in the details panel is first the transform details. So you can see here we have the location, rotation, and scale. And if you remember, if we hit W on our keyboard to move an object around, you can see as we move this cube on the Y axis, you can see in the location here, our Y axis values changing. So basically, whenever we move our cube on whichever axis that we have selected, you can see the actual value or location of that object update in the details panel. Now you can also set the location of this object, in this case our cube, by just selecting on any of these location coordinates. So if you select this and type in a zero, if you press tab, that allows you to go to the next option, and then we'll put zero, and then zero. Now you see our cube basically disappeared, but if we make sure we have our cube selected and press F, you can see our cube 
moved to the coordinates or the location 0, 0, 0, which in this case is the center of our level. So the details location basically just tells us where an object is located or what is the object's coordinates. So if we go ahead and undo all that, we can also do the same for a rotation. So if you press E, if we rotate this 90 degrees, negative 90 degrees, in the x-axis you can see our rotation updated to basically negative 90 degrees in the x. Okay, we can set that back to zero. And you can play with the values, do negative 20 on the y, negative 30 on the x. And now if you want to undo some of the changes, you can obviously click control Z. But what you're gonna see here is this little arrow. And if you hover over any of the buttons in Unreal Engine 5, it's gonna tell you basically what it does. In this case, it resets this property to its default value. So if we click that, you can see it resets the rotation back to 0, 0, 0. So that's the default rotation of this cube. Now if we press R, we get our scale gizmo. We can again scale our object, and you can see in the details the scale changes, or 2, 2, 2, and so on. So that is basically all the transform details for our cube. And again, you can see the different location, rotation, and scale per each object that you have selected in your viewport update in the details panel. Next up, we have static mesh. So basically, all the objects here are static meshes. And what a static mesh is, is an object that is static. It doesn't move or it doesn't do anything in the level. It just sits there and it doesn't move at all. In this case, our static mesh is a cube, uh, but in any other example, it can be a rock, or a building, or a trash can, or whatnot. Then we have our material here, and I'll explain materials, but you can see it's this little circle, and it shows us what color is our object, in this case blue. Okay, now there's some other details here, such as physics, collision. We're not going to go over all of these in this particular video, but just know that there are additional details per each object that you have selected. So that is the world outliner and the details panel. Again, the world outliner shows you which objects and also all of the different objects in your map or level. And then the details panel shows you individual details about each individual object that you have selected. So we have our viewport, our outliner, and our details. Let's actually jump right over in the top left of our screen and what you're going to find here are some of the basic program options so you have your file save all you also have a save button right here that saves any of the current changes that you've made to your scene or to your level okay under the file we also have a new level open level or recent levels okay then we have all of these save options and then we have some import options and also some creating a new project options. Here at the bottom we do have an exit button, but usually if I want to exit out of my project, I just hit this X in the bottom right of the screen. But those are the basic file options. Under edits we have undo and redo. We also have cut, copy, paste, duplicate, and delete. So you can see all these hotkeys right over here. And it's basically the same as in any other program, say using Word or Excel. We can do delete on our keyboard, deletes an object, control Z to undo, control C, control V. It actually duplicates or copy pastes an object. You can also duplicate an object pressing control D. You can see here we do have two cubes. We now have two cubes. Now the last settings under the edit are some of the different preferences, our project settings, and our plugins. Editor preferences basically lets you change things like the viewport color and also the viewport theme. Uh, you can completely customize the theme to your liking uh, if you don't like the dark theme. But I usually leave this as it is. Uh, now there are some more different preferences here for some of the different other systems within the engine such as audio, uh, blueprint, 
performance and whatnot. But again, we'll have to go over this in another video. Okay, we also have our project settings. So this allows us to change things like our project thumbnail, the name of our project and whatnot, as well as gives us some more different options we can customize on the different uh, systems within the engine. Okay, in the plugins, we have basically all the different plugins that we can install or some of the plugins that come pre-included with Unreal Engine 5. Plugins basically add more features or functionality to the engine. Unreal Engine 5 comes with a bunch of different built-in plugins. And when you have free time, you can browse through some of these different plugins and see if there is something that you might need. For now, we're just going to exit out of this and move on to the next tab here, which is Windows. If you by chance accidentally close any of the windows within the editor, for example, this details panel, if I accidentally close that, you can come to this window tab right up at the top, hover over the details and select details one. And that will re-show the details window that we accidentally exited out of. And that applies for any window that you accidentally close. You can come over here and re-show that window. Some of the more important things are down here at the bottom. If you accidentally mess around with the layout of the viewport, again, if you close some of the windows or if you move stuff around, you can always load the default editor layout or you can customize some of the viewports and save that layout. Under the tools here, we have a bunch of different tools. I'm not going to really go over some of these tools. Just know that this window exists. Under the build, we have some building options. Again, not going to really go into detail on this. Under the select here, different select options, select all. I don't really use this window at all. So again, we'll go ahead and move on to the next one, which is actor. So if we actually select an object, you can see here we have a couple different options. Again, I'm not going to go over some of these settings here. You can mess around with these or look into these into your own time. I don't really use this window. Okay, and last but not least, we have help. So this has links to the documentation, uh, the forms. If you have any questions, you can ask it on the, on the Unreal Engine forms and, and other people can comment and reply. Okay, so under that, we have our third person level here. Whenever you have a different level or map loaded up, you're going to see the name of the map. And whenever you have any sort of changes to your level, you're going to see this little asterisk. So if you hit save, you're going to see the asterisk goes away. But if we move this cube around, you can see we have some changes to our level. Next up, we have our select mode. So this little drop down allows us to change different modes. In our current case, we have select mode, which allows us to select different objects. We have landscape mode, which allows us to create landscapes, things like mountains and hills and stuff like that. We have the foliage mode. So this allows us to paint uh, grass and trees onto our landscape. We have mesh paint. This allows us to paint various objects in our level. Modeling. Unreal Engine 5 actually comes with some new modeling tools. And this actually allows us to block out our level as well as create different 3D models in the engine. Fracture, this allows us to create destructible meshes out of any object in our scene. So if you wanted to create a building that it is destructible, you can use the fracture mode. Now we have brush editing. This uh, allows us to block out levels using brush geometry. And then last but not least, we have animation, which is the animation mode. Uh, this is what you use when you're working with control rig to create custom animations for your character. Okay, so those are the different modes and you can always go back to select mode and you can see the different hotkeys to cycle through the different modes. Over here on the right, we have with this little green plus icon, this allows us to create various content or add various content to our level. So you can see we have an import content. I personally don't really use that button. Then we have Quixel Bridge, which is an asset library. Well, I'll go over in a second. Uh, we have the Unreal Engine Marketplace, which is basically where we can buy 3D models and assets for our level. We have our content browser and then some of the basic actors. So things like uh, character, lights, basic shapes, 
cinematic things like our cameras, visual effects like our fog, and whatnot. Okay, these next two buttons here allow us to modify our level blueprint. I won't go super in depth about this, but basically blueprints are again a way that you can code various things in Unreal Engine 5 by connecting nodes together. Next up here we have the level sequence. So if you're working with cinematics, you can create what's called a level sequence, which adds a timeline at the bottom of your screen where you can animate and create essentially movies. Now over here we have this green play button. So if you hit play, you can actually see this little character that we can run around moving WASD on the keyboard. And we can move our camera around by just moving our mouse around our character and move some of these cubes around our level. You can hit escape to exit out. You also have stop and also eject. So the eject button allows you to continue to simulate the viewports here to uh, freely navigate around and see what's going on inside your scene. Now platforms, uh, this allows you to package up your project uh, if you're working on a game to whichever platform you're trying to target. So for example, Android, iOS, Linux, and whatnot. Okay, so those are the various tabs on the ribbon up here at the top. Uh, so we've gone over our viewports, our ribbon up here, our outliner and our details. Last but not least, I want to go over our content drawer. So if you hit this little content drawer button, you're gonna see here we have this window that pops up. Now this is the content drawer or content browser, whatever you wanna call it. Previously in Unreal Engine 4, it was called the content browser, but really it's, it's a basically the same thing. Now what you see here, is on the right we have the different folders that hold all of the different objects in our project. So for example we have level prototyping. You can see the hierarchy of all the different folders. By hitting these down arrows here you can expand it. You can also click over here on the right on the folders to view the contents of the folder. You can go back by clicking on the previous folder here at the top. But as you can see in the mannequin folder character mesh we have our character that we saw we were running around as if we go back a couple we have all of the animations for our character things like the walk and jump and if we go into level prototype mesh you can see we have all of the different objects that make up our level and in this case we have the cube and some of the other different objects in our scene okay now if you right click back in your viewport you see the content browser or the content drawer automatically hides. You can also press control spacebar to bring up the content drawer or control spacebar to hide it. And you can also dock in layout. And now what that allows us to do is it'll always be visible on our screen and it won't auto hide. And of course, if you wanted to undock it, you can click this close or the X button and you can click the content drawer to have it reappear or gain control space. Okay, so the main thing that the content drawer allows you to do is it allows you to drag in any sort of object into your level. So we can drag in one of these cubes here, just like so, and move it around. And basically we can drag in whatever we have inside of our content drawer into our level. So if we have, you know, various different props like a tree, rocks, or whatnot, we can drag all of these assets or 3D models into our level by just selecting them and dragging and dropping them like so. Now you as the creator can always import and add more meshes and more objects into your content browser and Unreal Engine 5 allows you to add whatever you want whether it's a 3D character or just a random mesh like this cube. Now in your content drawer here you can also right click and you're going to see that you have this big window that allows you to add content into your content browser. Okay, you can see we first here have import into your game. So if you select that, it will allow you to import assets on your hard drive. So if you have a 3D model that you've made in another program, say Blender, uh, you can import this into Unreal Engine 5. If you also right click here, you can add a feature of co or content pack. So you can see in the blueprint, we can add some of the other templates 
to this actual project. So if we wanted to add third person, top down, virtual reality, we can add these templates to our current project. Okay, we also have a new folder. So if you create a new folder, we can organize some of the different objects that we want to import. So we can name this rocks. We can right click, add a new folder for trees. You can also right click and set the color of the folder if you want to really organize your project. You can also right click the folder and delete it to delete a folder from your content drawer. Okay, so if we go again, go ahead and right click, you're going to see there's still a lot more different things that you can actually create. There are blueprint classes, levels, materials, and down here in the advanced asset we have, there's just a ton of different things that you can create. Now you definitely might not use everything in here. Some of these things might not apply to you, but you can see we have things like FX, animation, sounds and whatnot. Okay, so instead of going through each and every single asset that you can create in Unreal Engine 5, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add some 3D models through Quixel Bridge. So what we want to do is we want to open up the Quixel Bridge window. So if you hit this little Q plus button, we're going to select the second option, which is Quixel Bridge. Now Quixel Bridge is a library of over 16,000 different assets. So these are things like materials. You can see we have various wood materials, rock materials, as well as different 3D models like these rocks, staircases, wooden furniture, all sorts of different things. Uh, this is a free library of over 16,000 different assets. If this is your very first time opening up Quixel Bridge, you're going to want to actually sign in. So to sign in, you just click this little profile icon here and click sign in. And you're going to go ahead and sign in with Epic Games. You want to sign in with Epic Games because, because once you've signed in, you can use any of these assets for free. You can download all of them and use them in your Unreal Engine projects. And there's just a ton of different high quality things. Um, if you just click on any of these objects, so for example, this rock, you're going to see picture of the object. You can also see related content. And what you're going to notice here is also this download button. Now to get any of these um, assets into your actual level, uh, you can actually click this download button and then this add button. Um, and that will add it to your content drawer. Uh, now a new feature in Unreal Engine 5 is you can actually drag and drop any of these assets directly into your level. So if we go ahead and move this window like so, I want to go ahead and drag and drop maybe a rock model. So I'm going to go ahead and search for rocks. Let's just select a random one, mossy forest rock. If you go ahead and drag it into your level, you're going to see it automatically starts to download the asset. And what I actually just did right there is it places in a temporary mesh representation of the 3D asset while it downloads in the background. So that actually went really quick. And now it might not be as quick depending on your internet connection. But you can see we can just start and drag some of the random rock models here. We can actually scale things up by pressing R. And really you can just drag in whatever you want into your level and it will automatically start downloading the 3D model into your scene. So you can see here we have this massive rock collection and we can move it around, rotate it, we can even scale it down. And it's just really easy to get whatever you want from Quixel Bridge into Unreal Engine 5. And again, this is all free to use for your commercial project or whatever sort of project that you're doing in Unreal Engine 5. Now there's a bunch of different things in Bridge, you have 3D assets, so you can see all the different categories, things like building parts, so pillars, beams, doors, walls, different types of foods, so fruits, vegetables, just a ton of different props as well as materials that you guys can play around with. Now once you've dragged a 3D object into your level from the Quixel Bridge window, What's going to happen is it's going to download the asset and it's going to show this little green checkbox and that means that the asset is currently stored on your hard drive in Quixel Bridge. 
So this window is shared between whatever project that you have open in Unreal Engine. If you have a brand new project, you're going to see that you have this asset downloaded on your hard drive. It also adds the asset inside of your content browser. So if I go ahead and minimize the bridge window in our content browser or content drawer, we have this mega scans, 3D assets, we have this modular building window, and we have this building window static mesh that we can drag into our scene. See an added two there, I can just select and delete one of those. And then we go ahead and move it and rotate this around. So again, Quixel Bridge is just an amazing resource for getting free 3D assets into your level. Now another thing I didn't talk about earlier, but is also a good resource for getting assets and models into your level, is the Unreal Engine Marketplace. Uh, if you open up your Epic Games Launcher and head over to the Marketplace tab here, you're going to see that there are actually a lot of different assets and 3D models that you can purchase or you can download for free. Now every single month, Epic Games actually gives away five free different marketplace assets. These are basically paid assets. So you can see here $59, $14. Every single month you want to go ahead and add these to your cart and check out uh, because they will be permanently free forever if you go ahead and claim them every month. Now there are some paid things. So if you want to browse by say characters and you are looking for different sort of character models, you can go ahead and purchase characters or if you're looking for props you can also download and buy different sort of prop packs um, now there are a lot of free stuff on the marketplace now there are some filters here uh, you can filter by free and there actually are a lot of different free assets on the marketplace so you can see here there's a bunch of different vehicles now if we go back to the home here and if you just select in the search products and click enter and filter by free you're going to see all the different free 3D models and assets that you can add to your project. And what I'm going to actually search for is for plane. And again, if we filter by free, we can see all the different free models that we get. So in this case, I just want to select this free airplane, this free plane 3D model. And to add any of these assets to your project, uh, you want to go ahead and click this either free button or if it's uh, a paid asset you want to add it to your cart and check out and once it's in your cart you can go ahead and click check out and then once that's finished or once you purchase the asset you're going to see these two buttons here add to project or write a review and what we want to do is we actually want to add to project and you're going to see all of the different projects that the 3D model or the asset is compatible with uh, but you can actually click here to show all projects and we can search for our first project and we can select it here now you can see here we have this red message asset not compatible with version 5.0 please select the closest alternative version in this case we're just going to hit this drop down arrow and select 4.27 then we have that red arrow message gone and then we can click add a project and so now it will start downloading and installing and it will also add it to our project so now that that's finished downloading in our content drawer if we go to our content vigilante content vehicles west bomber you can see here we have the 3d model that we've downloaded and added from the Unreal Engine Marketplace. And now you're going to see here that it's actually preparing shaders, also preparing shaders here in the top left. And what that is doing is it's basically has to compile the shaders of the new model or the different materials on the new model that you've imported into your project. So just give it a couple minutes uh, depending on how complex or how detailed the asset that you imported is. Okay, so now that it's finished compiling shaders, we see we have this plane 3 model that we've downloaded and added from the marketplace. Uh, we can move this thing around, rotate it, scale this thing down if we don't want it too big. 
and do what we want with it. Okay, so that is one way that we can add assets from the marketplace. Another way is if you head over to the library tab, uh, if you scroll down past your projects, you're going to see here your vault. Now this contains all the different marketplace assets that you've either purchased or you claimed for free um, from the marketplace. And you can see here we have a lot of different options here you can add to project uh, just by finding whichever asset pack that you want and then you can add it to your current project that you're working on. So yeah, that is the Unreal Engine Marketplace. Uh, there's a lot of useful stuff that you can get on there for free. Uh, but again, you also do have Quixel Bridge, which has just a lot more uh, different free assets that you can download and play around with. But yeah, that is basically the Unreal Engine 5 beginner tutorial. Just kind of getting you used to the various different windows, the various different controls, as well as uh, just some of the UI inside of Unreal Engine 5. Really just wanted to get you guys familiar with the basic controls as well as just to get your feet wet with how to use the engine. And that way you feel more comfortable with using Unreal Engine 5. Now I will make a follow-up tutorial going through some of the various other windows and editors inside of Unreal Engine 5. Things like explaining what are blueprints, um, how to import content into the engine, and other various basic things that you might need to know when using Unreal Engine 5. So anyways, if you guys enjoy the video, make sure you guys leave a like button and don't forget to subscribe for more Unreal Engine 5 beginner tutorials. So with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video.